The PlayStation 5 is just months away at this point. We've already seen a good chunk of actual gameplay in PlayStation 5 titles, demonstrating technical effects and image quality that go well beyond what's possible with the current generation of consoles. However, key questions remain about the staying power of the new consoles. Keep in mind that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X both need to stay relevant for console gamers and the gaming industry on the whole for at least the next five to seven years. Is the hardware in the PlayStation 5 really up to delivering the kind of gaming experiences we expect from the year 2027, literally the point of time when Deus Ex Human Revolution takes place? One possibility is to look beyond the teraflop numbers and focus on how each console leverages unique technology and software features. A recent report indicates that the PlayStation 5 will leverage a subset of RDNA 3 features. Functionality AMD is building into the GPUs it'll bring to market after Big Navi, and likely not available to the PC market until at least 2022. If this is true, what does this mean for PlayStation gamers, and why does it matter? It implies complete support for the RDNA 2 feature set. The big takeaway here, really, is that the PlayStation 5 will likely offer a feature-complete implementation of RDNA 2, with key special optimizations and features like variable rate shading. This might sound a bit like temper your expectations, but let's keep in mind that RDNA 2 parts haven't actually been released yet, either. Variable rate shading on the PlayStation 5, a core RDNA 2 function, will likely help to retain great image quality and performance at 4K and higher resolutions. Earlier reports indicated that certain developers, like Capcom, had trouble getting their 9th generation exclusive games, like Resident Evil Village, working on the PlayStation 5 at 4K. As of now, it's not entirely clear whether this is due to early stage optimization issues or because of the limits of the PlayStation 5's hardware configuration, and the fact that, at the end of the day, 4K remains a stratospherically high resolution target. Once we progress past the cross-gen period where support for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is mandatory, we'll increasingly see games that hit the PlayStation 5's GPU hard, especially at 4K. In these cases, variable rate shading will come in handy to offer a degree of GPU overhead without noticeably impacting performance. So, how does VRS work? Variable rate shading essentially takes advantage of the fact that perceived resolution varies across a person's field of view. Pin-sharp 4K only really matters in a relatively narrow cone of view immediately in front of the eyes. Further out to the left and the right, perceptual resolution is as low as one-half or even one-fourth of the nominal level. By dynamically adjusting the shading rate in specific parts of on-screen images, developers free up a substantial amount of GPU resources without affecting perceived image quality. It could mean support for AI-based frame reconstruction technology. Sony recently made waves when patents were uncovered for PlayStation frame reconstruction technology that offered similar functionality to NVIDIA's DLSS. Support for RDNA 3 features raises the prospect that the PlayStation 5 could support some form of AI-based frame upscaling and reconstruction. Since the PlayStation 5's GPU doesn't have dedicated tensor cores for machine learning workloads, frame reconstruction would have to be done in software, with a slightly higher performance hit. Regardless, this can still mean tangible improvements to performance. Remedy's control was recently updated with what was described as DLSS 1.9, essentially a software implementation of NVIDIA's general purpose DLSS 2.0. While the performance hit of DLSS 1.9 was somewhat higher than Control's earlier DLSS 1.0 implementation, image quality and overall performance improvements are undeniable. The PlayStation 5 could potentially leverage forward-facing RDNA functionality to deliver great frame reconstruction and upscaling results without the need for tensor cores. As games become more graphically intensive, this will be a key approach in maintaining performance at 4K. Moreover, if developers actually plan to deliver games that run at 8K, some kind of frame reconstruction or upscaling is critical. Enhanced performance thanks to the custom geometry engine. Reports indicate that the PlayStation 5 features a custom geometry engine that delivers better mesh shading and VRS performance than RDNA 2, as seen in the Xbox Series X and in upcoming PC products. 
It isn't clear yet whether or not the PlayStation 5's Geometry Engine adopts RDNA 3 features, or if this is a fully custom design. Regardless, this has long-term implementations for the staying power of the PlayStation 5. High fidelity models are a key aspect of the 9th generation visual set. This is something we saw in demos like Lumen in the Land of Nanite, as well as in actual gameplay snippets. The PlayStation 5's next generation mesh shading capabilities should allow it to handle a higher geometry throughput. This would mean more polygons on screen at a time, less pop-in, and higher quality character and object models. Because of diminishing returns, it takes an exponentially higher poly count to create models that look objectively more realistic than current gen models. More efficient mesh shading could give the PlayStation 5 performance headroom to make this a reality. Possible Ray Tracing Optimizations While AMD has stated that RDNA 2 parts will support hardware accelerated ray tracing, it's still not clear as to exactly what form hardware acceleration will take. Will Big Navi and other RDNA 2 parts feature bespoke RT cores in the same way as NVIDIA's Turing hardware, or will RDNA 2 cards run ray tracing workloads on the shaders with bespoke optimizations for performance? We're leaning towards the second option. But why does this matter for the PlayStation 5? A lot has been made about the PlayStation 5's ray tracing capabilities. A number of PlayStation 5 gameplay reveals, including Gran Turismo, showcase spectacular ray tracing implementations, beyond what we've seen in the PC space. The push for ray tracing on PlayStation 5 hardware is puzzling because we're still unclear about the extent of AMD's ray tracing support on RDNA 2. RDNA 3 Special Sauce could be one possible answer. Regardless of the exact form that hardware ray tracing support is deployed on the PlayStation 5, it's possible that AMD might bake in RDNA 3 based ray tracing optimizations to deliver superior ray tracing performance on the Sony console. This forward facing approach might be critical to ensuring adequate ray tracing performance in the long term, with Big Navi and Ampere cards like the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti expected to make major inroads in terms of PC ray tracing performance. Conclusion at this point, it's still very early to determine the exact impact of possible RDNA 3 features on the PlayStation 5's performance. What we do know is that Sony's delivering a capable 4K console with support for hardware accelerated ray tracing and emerging technologies like variable rate shading. Whether or not RDNA 3 Secret Sauce is deployed, we expect PlayStation 5 owners to see a night and day difference in fidelity over the PlayStation 4. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.